in this one, we're going to take um, our list and we're going to do something a little bit more than just showing a plain old list of data. We're actually going to have a form uh, to create a new tchotchke and do a post to create it on a server. Uh, the little server that I have that's written in Express and Node uh, will take a post and add a tchotchke to the list. So we're going to do that. And I've taken the liberty to kind of lay out our uh, tchotchkes list with a container component that now has two components in it instead of one, the list on the left, and the new tchotchke on the right. Um, that is just a simple layout. So I'll show you how that works. I'm using uh, Twitter Bootstrap to set up a row with a, dot, a dark border uh, on the top. Uh, and I'm saying that there's a seven column grid uh, entry of the 12 columns you get in a grid row. Uh, and on the left, in that seven column grid, we put our tchotchkes list. And we have a new component here, tchotchkes form, uh, tchotchke form, which is a five column one on the right. Uh, and so as long as you put ones in that are less than 12 columns in total length, or yeah, basically length, uh, width, so to speak, uh, you will actually see two of them at the same time occupying the same quote unquote logical row here. And now we have a place to do something. I'm also using the fun little, um, you can take a look at this component here. I'm using the Jumbotron, which is a Twitter bootstrap little div to, to show that we've got something in a location before we actually build something. So our form component is actually gonna take advantage of the reactive forms API. And so I've created a separate module for it. If we look at the module briefly, you'll see that we're importing the reactive forms module. The reactive forms API lets me create a form group, which is a container for form data inside of component, bind it to some input fields, and then connect some observable code to it to do things uh, if we'd like. But now taking a look at this thing, we're going to go ahead and build on our form. And so what we'll do first is we'll set up the mechanics here. So the mechanics are that we're going to need to have a constructor in here and we're going to hold on to a form group in the constructor. So let me put that in our class. Oh, we're going to create it basically. Um, so what's happening is we're going to create a variable called tchotchke form group. That is the representation of all the form field state during the editing of our form. So we'll be binding this into the template above. And we're gonna create it by using something called the form builder service from Angular Forms. Uh, this is a reactive form builder. It creates form objects, form group objects that allow us to do things like bind the form to input fields and also ultimately do validation, which we'll see in an upcoming exercise. And we need our tchotchke service because ultimately we're gonna create a create tchotchke method in that service and call it from this component. Now, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a callback. So we're gonna implement on init and we're gonna do the simplest of reactive forms. We're gonna do validation in a later uh, lesson. Uh, coming up in a couple lessons. But what we're doing here is we're saying build us a form group that has four named properties, name, description, price, and quantity on hand. Those four properties represent the data we want to use to create a new tchotchke. And the values are the starting values in the form group for each of those form fields. And now all we have to do is build up our form. I'm going to save myself some time in here and paste the entire form uh, and we'll walk through what the form does. Um, so we've got a form group being bound as a property to the form, tchotchke form group. And the tchotchke form group ultimately will handle a method called handle submit whenever we submit the form. That's by clicking the default button or hitting enter on a field uh, on some forms. So the form is going to trigger handle submit when it's submitted. Um, that's a method we're going to build in this component to call the method on our service. We are then going to create form groups for each of the forms. A form group is a Twitter bootstrap layout of both the label and the input one after the other in a uh, kind of block layout. And so our form group is going to use a label. Uh, we're going to use name as a property for each of the form field names. And actually, you do that 
um, mainly for this four layout. Uh, it's helpful, but all the other information about the form is contained within the form group. So this is mostly for the four keyword of label. Um, and now we also have the most important thing, form control name. That is the one property with reactive forms that bind the property to the input type. So we're saying for this input here, which is a text input, um, we're saying that it's bound to the property name of the form control. And notice this isn't two-way or one-way bound with a bracket. It's a one-time static string binding because, frankly, we're just binding a property called name, which is a string, to the form control name directive, which binds it to the reactive form field. We do the same thing for description, same thing for price, and the same thing for quantity on hand. The only thing that's different between these two and the other two is that they both are type number. It's the main difference between them. And then at the end, we have a button of type submit. And we make it a large button. This is Twitter bootstrap layout. Uh, button, button large, button primary. So it looks very official. It's nice and blue. That's the primary button icon color in the default theme for Twitter Bootstrap. Uh, and now we have our button. So ng on init creates our form builder uh, group, form group through the form builder, and it creates it as tchotchke form group. By the time that's done, we then render. Um, so between ng on init and the uh, rendering process, that will be truthy, and then, then I don't need that guard. And the other thing is we have our tchotchke service, which can actually do our submit. Now, let's build out that method, handle submit. And handle submit is going to basically give us some diagnostic information in addition to actually making a call. But we're going to build this little service called create tchotchke, uh, this method called create tchotchke on the tchotchke service. And we're going to give it the value of the form group. So the value of Chachi form group is the current state value of it when we submit. So unlike the two-way bound forms, the declarative forms in Angular, the reactive forms, there's a value which is the current value at any time. There's even a value changes uh, that can actually tell me when values have been changed and give me the updated thing there, and that's an observable. But this is just a simple object. We subscribe to that. I'm just putting a console log in there uh, just to show that things are happening. And I'm then resetting the form group when we're done because if we've actually created the tchotchke and got our subscription back, that means it worked. Um, and so resetting lets us set the value back to a default and reset the state of the form. And it takes an object with all the properties and the default values again. And that should take care of everything but the service itself. So in the service itself, we're going to come in and we're going to call our create tchotchke method. So now that will return the observable back that we can subscribe to and execute the call. And if we go back here and take a look, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, create new tchotchke. Now, thing is it won't actually show right away and we're going to fix that in an upcoming lesson. If you hit refresh, it will be there. So it did work and we'll come back in a later lesson and show you how to automatically uh, refresh. Actually, it's the next lesson up, uh, how to automatically reload that list once you're done. I hope you find these useful and if you're looking for on-site training, advice, mentoring, or technical help with any area of your full stack development efforts, head over to chariotsolutions.com to check out our services. Thank you.